The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing. Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there is none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A man observed a woman in a grocery store with a three-year-old girl in her basket. And as they passed the cookie section, the child asked for cookies and her mother told her, no. And the little girl immediately began to whine and fuss. And the mother said quietly, Now, Ellen, we just have half the aisles left to go through. Don't be upset. It won't be long. He passed the mother again in the candy aisle. And of course, the little girl began to shout for candy. When she was told she couldn't have any, she began to cry. The mother said, There, there, Ellen, don't cry. Only two more aisles to go, then we'll be checking out. The man again happened to be behind the pair in the checkout line where the little girl immediately began to clamor for some gum and burst into a terrible tantrum when discovered that there wouldn't be any gum purchased today. The mother patiently said, Ellen, we'll be through this checkout stand in five minutes and then you can go home and have a nice nap. The man followed them out to the parking lot and stopped the woman to compliment her. I couldn't help but noticing how patient you were with little Ellen. The mother broke in. My little girl's name is Tammy. I'm Ellen. St. James tells us today that we should be patient. Patient like a farmer that waits for precious fruit. Patient until the coming of the Lord, until Jesus returns. Now, patience makes sense on this third Sunday of Advent because Advent is a season of patient waiting and we mark this particular day with pink because we're halfway through. We've only got a few more aisles to go and it won't be long. So rejoice, be happy in anticipation. Now we enter the season of Advent preparing to celebrate the historic incarnation of Jesus, our Savior, while also preparing for the triumphant return of Christ the King. St. James was telling people to be patient from an understanding that Jesus' return was imminent. Now for us, it's been 2,000 years, Christmas after Christmas, singing Silent Night and Joy to the World. And perhaps we're wondering if we're really any better off. Our world is convulsed by wars, tyranny, natural disasters, and racism, and countless other forms of misery, injustice, and suffering. 
And some may ask, where is the salvation? Be patient. Now, patience can be a funny thing. I could like to think that there must be some sort of way of calculating a patience quotient that's like based on the length of time that one would have to wait, the value of what's being waited for, and then some sort of factor that measures in pro, uh, a perception of progress. But then all of that would have to be divided by the mood that I happen to be in while I'm waiting. Now, Disney, with its lines for its attractions, knows how to foster patience. Municipal organization, though, not so much. I mean, if you think about the most dreaded wait times that you've ever experienced, you'd probably think of the DMV or maybe simply a, a gruelingly long traffic light because even short waits can be frustrating when we're in a hurry. And long waits, you know, that's just counting off hours of lost valuable time in our lives. But then again, sometimes a wait can be so long that the need for patience just drifts away because we forget what we've been waiting for. And that seems to have been the case for the disciples in the gospel. John the Baptist sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he is the one to come, the one that they've been waiting for. And Jesus responds, well, what do you see and hear? Does any of this sound familiar? You know, think back to that prophet Isaiah. Now, to be fair, Isaiah spoke those words 700 years earlier, and we got to hear them side by side with the gospel. So Jesus is the one, and we know that. But their wait for the Messiah was less than half the time that we've been waiting already. So we must be patient, like a farmer. And like a farmer, God, 2,000 years ago, planted that seed of grace in the world, and it's been growing ever since, expanding the church, producing saints, and renewing human culture from within through the invention of institutions like orphanages and hospitals and schools. And this shows that people of faith, disciples of Jesus Christ, know what to do while they wait. Like the Disney Q designers, they know that patience is not idle. Waiting is more tolerable if we're occupied with some aspect of what we're waiting for. If we get to do something productive with our wait time and perceive progress towards our ultimate goal. This idea of active patience makes even more sense when you consider the P word themes that we've been hearing these Sundays of Advent. Persevere, prepare, and be patient. Persevere, stay awake, be alert, put on the armor of light. Prepare, prepare the way of the Lord, make the path straight and level, and bear good fruit. Patience. God works gradually, patiently, because God wants to make sure that we are able to keep up. And we need to be as patient with God as God is patient with us. So Jesus did give us the gift of salvation 2,000 years ago. And then each of us were united with that gift perhaps many years ago through our individual baptism. Where God planted the seed of grace in our hearts and has given us a hope, a faith, and a healthy conscience. But are we properly nurturing that seed to make sure it produces precious fruit? Since our baptism, we've received Eucharist many times, have been confirmed, gone to confession, and yet, if we look honestly into our hearts, we see that we're still selfish, weak, confused, and yearning for more. We have each celebrated many Christmases, but are we any better because of them? Are we making any real progress in our spiritual lives? Patience. God is patient with us, and we need to be patient with ourselves and with each other. But it must be an act. 
active patience. Maybe we need to work on patience like Ellen from the grocery store. And we work with patience knowing that all good things take time. And with this kind of patience, we are helping bring about what we are waiting for, the best version of ourselves and our community characterized by loving God and loving our neighbor. As St. Paul said to the Corinthians, love is patient. If all of us can love, care for, and serve better, even gradually, little by little, we will also be helping bring about significant change in our world. We'll be helping make the world the peaceful and just place we wait for each Advent. So be patient, because the coming of the Lord is at hand.